Hello, welcome to another coding challenge. This coding challenge will happen in two parts. It actually picks up from two previous videos, all leading up to eventually making this thing over there that's kind of undulating, oscillating, called the super shape. So I'm gonna get to the super shape, not in this video, but the one that follows this one, because the first thing I need to do in this particular video before I can figure out how to make the crazy looking super shape is simply just how to draw a sphere. And I'm gonna do this in processing, which is a Java-based creative coding environment. Now, first, I should mention, if I just wanna draw a sphere, I can actually do this really easily. So here, I'm just gonna say, set up, I'm gonna say size. Let's have a nice window that's like 600 by 600. And I'm gonna use the 3D rendering engine, P3D. In draw, I'm gonna say background, zero. Then I'm gonna say, I like to just, I'm, I'm feeling giddy while doing this. I'm gonna say fill, 255. I'm gonna say translate, width divided by two, height divided by two. And then I'm just gonna say sphere. And I don't know, I'm gonna say like 200. And then I'm also gonna say lights, lights, camera, action. And then I'm gonna run the sketch and uh, there I have, come on, oh, and there, look, I have a sphere. So this was actually really, really easy to draw a sphere because processing has built into it a function called sphere that will just create a sphere. But you'll notice the sphere isn't actually a sphere. I mean, of course, it's not anything at all. You're, this is like pixels in some sort of like YouTube space, and maybe I'm just pixels in somebody else's imagination. I don't know, maybe the, everything we are is some kind of weird computer simulation, and I'm... I think I've, I've, lost, I've lost track here. Back to what's at hand. Uh, uh, it's, it, what it is, is it's a lot of triangles all placed next to each other. And you can see those triangles if I zoom up here. And these are actually known as triangle strips because of these, there's these horizontal or vertical strips of triangles. So what I want to show you in this video is how to draw these triangles yourself. Because if you can draw them yourself, then you can start to move the triangles around so they undulate. You could color them with different colors individually. You could texture them with an image. There's all sorts of types of things you can do. And ultimately, what the super shape is, is it's like having this sphere, but taking certain points of the sphere and pulling them out and pushing them in based on some other math. So that's what I want to do in this particular video. OK, so what's something that we need to become familiar with? So one thing that I th think that would be worth discussing briefly, awkward shuffle this way, button press, hello, <laughs> hello, we're still here, um, <clears throat> it would be to talk about how do we look, how do we, how do we think about, talk about, and consider the points on a sphere. So you've probably heard of something that always completely confuses me, and I get it backwards, I would say about 75% of the time that I talk about it, and hopefully this is gonna be the 25% of the time, but you've probably heard of something called latitude and longitude. So if you think about the Earth as a globe, and I could draw the globe here as like, here's a circle, this pen is not so great, and I could kind of draw these strips here, uh, trying to use my best artistic talent to make something that looks 3D-esque, and you can think of this in a way as like, okay, there is a grid of columns and rows. And if we were to take this flat two-dimensional grid and take it and kind of wrap it around a sphere, you know, this way, this is like the map of the Earth that we've taken and wrapped around a sphere. And each point along the sphere is represented by a longitude, meaning which one of these columns, so to speak, by a latitude, which one of these rows, so to speak. And the latitude in the middle is you know, referred to as the equator. Now, <clears throat> these can be, you know, there's lots of different ways of kind of measuring latitude and longitude, minutes and seconds, and there's the prime meridian and all this stuff. I'm, I would love to do another video about mapping. <laughs> I think I will get to that at some point. But for us right here, the measurements that we're going to use are angles. It's kind of an angle of rotation, you can think of it. And longitude goes between negative 180 degrees to 180 degrees. And latitude, right, so that's a full kind of 360 all the way around that globe, but latitude only needs to go between negative 90, degree, oh, 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees. So these ranges will cover every point on the globe. And there's some nuance to this, but I'm kind of doing this in a sort of basic, pure, loose way. So what I need to do is have a loop, just like you might have a nested loop for pixels, x, <laughs> knocking over cameras, just like you might have a nested loop for pixels, pixel 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What I want to do is have a nested loop for longitude values and latitude values. Hopefully I got this right. 
I'll redo this video or put lots of YouTube annotations all over it. People on the internet are really going to get mad at me if I get this wrong. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now get rid of this line of code that says sphere 200. And what I'm going to do is and I'm going to say, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something strange. Instead of actually doing my loop from negative pi to pi or negative 180 degrees to 180 degrees, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm just going to say, i goes from 0 to like 100. And then I'm going to have a nested loop inside that. j goes from 0 to 100. And what the 100 is kind of going to refer to is how many points. What's my detail level of this sphere? And actually processing as a sphere detail function that can set that for the, the automatic spheres that are drawn. So like how like fine is the resolution? How many points across? How many points below? So I'm going to do that. And then what I want to do is then take every i. So let's have i be the longitude values. I think that'll make sense. So I need a longitude value, which is mapping i from 0 to 100. And let's make that 100 a variable. Uh, map, so i, um, i is between 0. And, and each one of those should then map to the range of negative pi to pi. And then the latitude should map between negative half pi to half pi. OK? I think I'm doing pretty well here. And um, I'm going to change this to total and total. Now, oops, and I'm going to change, I'm going to save this as a sphere geometry. OK. So now. I need to do something more. So let me just run this to make sure it doesn't crash or give me any errors. OK, so this seems reasonable. It's working. Now here's the thing. What I need to do is take those, each one of these latitude and longitude values, which we can think of as a pair of values, and have some math to convert that to an x, y, z value. Now this is something quite similar to what I've done before. And actually, by the way, um, this should really be written like this, r comma latitude longitude. Because I really have three values, r being the radius of that sphere. This is very similar to something I've done in previous videos. If I have r and theta, a radius and an angle, I need to convert that to an x, y value. This is kind of a polar coordinates, right? If I have a radius and a theta, I need to convert that to an x and a y. And there are formulas for that. r equals, sorry, x equals r times cosine of theta. y equals r times sine of theta. Now, if this polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation is unfamiliar to you, I would suggest looking at one of my previous videos where I covered that in more detail. But what I need to do is essentially apply the same kind of math, but it's a bit more complex math because instead of having I have one radius, but instead of one angle, I essentially have two angles. And the results I want, instead of having an x and a y, I have an x and a y and a z. So let's go and look at, e look at how that works. OK, so there's a nice place on the internet, you may have heard of it, where I could find those formulas. It's called Wikipedia. And I have them right here. And these are the formulas for converting from latitude and longitude. And I believe in this case, the theta refers to longitude. And the phi or phi symbol, phi phi pho fum, fum symbol, <laughs> refers to, it's the Greek letter phi, but I think it's often informally pronounced phi. I don't know why. <laughs> um, uh, is a latitude. Hopefully I got that right. And when we find out that I got it wrong, we'll fix it. OK, so these are the formulas I need. x equals r times sine of longitude cosine of latitude. So let's put that in to the code. x equals r times what? What did I say? <laughs> sine of longitude times, times cosine of latitude. You know, I'm not deriving these formulas. I, I don't know that I could just do that off the top of my head right now. If people are interested in that, I could make a sort of side video. Uh, and then y equals r times sine of longitude, sine of latitude sine of longitude, sine of latitude. And z equals r times what? Cosine of longitude. 
And what is R? Well, by the way, when I drew the sphere automatically, I gave it a value of 200. I'm pretty sure that would be the radius. So what I want to say here is uh, float R equals, no, 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 no. I have to think to remember what I'm doing. 200. OK. So now we should have a longitude or latitude mapped in a nested loop and calculated in x, y, z. So let's do something simple and just say stroke 255 and say point x, y, z. And let's hope that we get something that looks like a sphere. Ooh, no. <laughs> that doesn't look right at all. <laughs> Ooh, interesting though. What did I do wrong? OK, pa time out, pause. OK, back after debugging, uh, I had a really silly error here where I was using i in both of the loops. So i is the value that's going across for all the longitudes, and j is the value that's going down for all the latitudes. And by the way, if I want to calculate my latitude, I need to use j. So now we should see, what do I get? These are all the points of a sphere. Now, it's sort of hard to see that this is a sphere because it kind of just looks like a lot of points in two dimensions in like these radial circles. So one thing that I'm going to do to be able to manipulate this scene very quickly and easily is add a processing library called PZCam. I've shown in other videos how to install it, but so I'm just going to go here. I already have it installed. Um, I'm going to go here and import PZCam, and then uh, I don't actually need all this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I need to create a PZCam object, which is a camera. I'm going to say camera equals a new PZCam. Uh, this, so that it controls this sketch, and 200, because I want my view to be about 200 kind of 3D pixels away. And once I do that, uh, we should have something that looks like, whoops. Uh, mm, oh, I, now I don't need to translate to the middle. PZCam does that for me automatically. And it shows something that looks like this. And we can rotate around. We can see this is indeed something very spherical. I can look at it and rotate around. And we can really see also, by the way, how this total value is going to affect the resolution of this sphere. So for example, if I were to say I just want to use 20 units for each latitude and longitude, whoops, run this code, you can see that sphere is still there. But you can see there's not as many. Oh, boy, this is very hard for you to see. Um, just for the sake of the live stream, let me say stroke weight 4 right now um, so that those uh, kind of dots become. Oh, and I, I should probably start further away. You can see the kind of resolution of this sphere as much smaller, so to speak. OK, yes, so, um, so Oliver is pointing something in the chat that it should be less than or equal to total. I'm going to get to that in a moment. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to get to that in a moment. So that's going to come up as I start to add the triangle strips. So let me leave this at 20 for right now. And uh, let me just fix this uh, PZ Camp thing to start a little further away. OK, so this is, real. this is what I'm looking for. I now have a sphere. Now, here's the thing. The sphere now is just dots. And what I want to actually do, come back here, is to have each one of these dots become two triangular polygons. You know, there's a variety of ways I could kind of mesh this sphere, but this is an easy way. And so what I want to do is create these triangle strips. And I'm going to create them as horizontal strips. So I want to, for each time I go to a different latitude, I want to start a new triangle strip. And I need to say each triangle is one longitude value followed by another longitude value followed by a value that follows um, no, no, I think what I'm going to do is this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need to say one longitude value followed by the latitude below it followed by another longitude value there. And that gives me that. And then when I go down here, it'll give me this. And when I go there, it'll give me this. And when I go down here, it'll give me this. So that's going to connect that whole wrap around as a, a bunch of triangles. I don't know if I explained that so well, but <laughs> let me know in the chat. OK, or the comments, or whatever, wherever this video is being watched. OK, so first thing I want to look at is, in order to do this, what I actually want to do, I think will make things simpler, is calculate all of those vertice, vertex points in an array. Because I want to pre-compute the sphere and then draw it in a separate loop. So that Because I'm going to like be using different points along the sphere as I go. So one way of doing that is to create a two-dimensional array. So uh, and the idea here is that I have a two-dimensional array to store the x, y, z value for every single latitude and longitude. So I'm going to come back over here. 
and I'm going to say p vector, two-dimensional array, and I don't know what to call it. I'm going to call this globe. And then right somewhere here, I, you know, I could be smart about this. Let me be smart about this. And very little that I do is smart. I'm going to put the total as a global variable because what I'm going to do here is say globe is a new two-dimensional array. And uh, what I need, oh, no, no it, it, which has a total and a total. So I need 20 columns and 20 rows, essentially, 20 spots for latitude values and 20 spots for longitude values, whatever. <laughs> there's, there's probably a science to this that often escapes me. But um, OK, so I'm doing that. And then here, instead of actually drawing the points, I don't want to do that anymore. What I want to do is say globe, i is longitude. So I'm going to say, um, so actually, I want to do this differently. I want to do uh, for every latitude, do all the longitude. So I'm actually going to change this. And I'm going to have i refer to latitude. So I want to ref swap these. I think I'm doing this right. We'll find out. Uh, so I want to say i is like the longitude value. j is the latitude value, is a new p vector. A vector, by the way, is a data structure that can store the x, y, and z components all together. There's more to it than that. Uh, I have plenty of other videos about p vector. So I want to do this. Let me just run this, make sure I don't have any errors. Great. So now I'm going to copy this loop exactly. And I don't need to do any of the calculation anymore the second time around. All I need to do is say, I have a p vector v, which is at that spot. And then what I want to do is s draw the point. So I just want to make sure the same thing works. v dot x, v dot y, and v dot z. So I should get the same exact thing I had before, which it looks like I do. So I haven't done anything new. The only thing I've changed is that I first have a loop to calculate everything, because all the sine and cosine stuff is expensive calculations. So I don't want to do that multiple times if I don't have to. So I'm going to calculate everything, put it in this two-dimensional array, and then use the two-dimensional array to set a bunch of points. And now is the moment where, <laughs> instead of points, I can say, for every j, I want to start a new triangle strip. And at the end of every row or every kind of um, every uh, latitude, I want to end shape. And I want the vertices, I want to set the vertices to be this vector. Now, however, I'm going to make this v1. Because remember, what I needed to do was I needed to say, I want to set this point, then this point, then this point. And that gives me a triangle. Then this point, then this point. So I need to skip down one. So what I'm going to do now is say, I want another vector. V2 equals globe i plus 1 j. And then I want that to be the next vertex. Just by the way, let me just comment this out and show you what happens. I don't know if we're going to get anything at all. We get just these like lines across. It didn't actually make the triangles. And I don't think, I think we can do away with the stroke weight. I'll leave it at two just so it's quite visible. So you can see what we've got here. We've got this sort of almost like, I don't know what to call it, like foldy patterny thingy. <laughs> so I need that bottom vertex. I need to do top, bottom, across, bottom, across, bottom, across. And now, once I do that, you're going to see, ah, OK, I have an error. I have an array index out of bounds error. Why? Well, I'm only going from j to total. And then I'm saying i plus 1. So I could say, just for right now, I'm going to say total minus 1. I mean, for i, total minus 1. Like I, I, because I need i in the next one, i in the next one, I want to stop one early. And now you can see I have the triangle. I have that triangle stripped. Now, now, let's look at what's going on here. There's like this hole. There's like a seam here. And also, you know, I didn't finish the top, I think, is missing. Maybe I kind of got it. There's like, there's like a bunch of holes. So why is that? Well, there's kind of a problem, which is that while I'm going around in a oh, whoops. While I'm going around, I mean, it's kind of nice looking. And, look, and it's interesting to see how you can manipulate and cut holes and do all sorts of things. 
but while I'm going around it, I actually need to end up where I started instead of stopping at the last one before. And so we need to adjust the code to really do that. And there is one way I'm going to do that, it was a trick way, is just say like, well, I have this value called total, which is 20, but I'm actually going to make my array always one bigger, and then I'm going to do less than or equal in the loop. Or I could just do less than, you know what, just for uh, consistency, this is really the same thing. I'm going to say total plus one, total plus one. And then now with i, i doesn't go to total minus one here, i goes all the way to total, and j goes to total plus one. So if I run this again, we should see here that I have the whole sphere now. So you can see I have now created geometry for an entire sphere, and there's all sorts of exciting things we could do all of a sudden now that we've done this. All right, hold on, time out. Let's keep going. Yes, we're sort of programming the Death Star in a way. Um, now let's do a few things. I didn't notice, oh, I had a fill here. I didn't realize that. So let's do something. Let's just say for a second that I want to look at, um, I want to just sort of see these as separate strips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to have a different fill here. I'm going to say, uh, if i modulus 2 equals 0, what does that mean, i modulus 2 equals 0? Modulus is an operation that gives you the remainder of division. So 2 modulus 2 is 0. 3 modulus 2 is 1. 4 modulus 2 is 0. 5 modulus 2 is 1. So I'm saying every other kind of row, so to speak, let's say fill 0, otherwise fill 255. And now we can see really that we have these strips here. So I have each, oh, and I did it. Wait, <laughs> start over. Did I really do this? I think I did something backwards because I was imagining my strips going <laughs> across this way. So I will look at this. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so uh, somebody in the chat points out that I shouldn't be recomputing uh, the sphere over and over again and draw, and that's absolutely true. The only reason I'm doing that is because ultimately I'm going to do, I'm going to animate and I'm going to morph the sphere, and so at that point I'm going to need to recalculate the points every time, so I'm setting up the examples that way. Okay, so you can see how I can kind of alternate colors. I could also do something like, uh, let's make a rainbow. So I'm going to make a HSB color as the color mode, and I'm going to fill from, um, I'm going to say, give me a hue value, which is maps i, uh, I guess I can do this with j now if I want, uh, whips, which maps j, let's just try that, from 0 to total to 0 to 255, and I can say fill that hue with full brightness and saturation, and now we have got a kind of rainbowy looking thing, but you can see like I, uh, first of all, let's take out the stroke. Let's take out the uh, stroke, just so we've got the colors. Um, and I'm gonna say no stroke. And I'm also going to do something like, well, let's actually map the hue to 255 times uh, six and say hue modulus 255. So we cycle around the rainbow multiple times. And there we go, and I didn't get this, so I messed up having this align up, the seams line up correctly. I'm gonna fix that in between this video and the next one, I'm not gonna, you could fix that on your own as an exercise. I, I think I have a couple things backwards here and there as I built this, um, but you can see what the possibilities are. I could also start doing things like, um, I could take these, uh, each time I calculate the globe, I could also say, um, a gl uh, I can make a random vector a random 3D vector, random, random 3D. I could scale it by some amount, 10, and then I could say globe i j j, j dot add that random vector. And if I do that, you're going to see I now have this sort of like jiggling. All the points are kind of moving randomly. I could do something with Perl and noise. You can see the possibilities emerging in how you individually color each tile and how you might individually move and adjust those points. So this, I think, uh, finishes my tutorial on sphere geometry. And what I'm going to do in the next video is fix a few things here that I might have gotten wrong, as well as move towards how I can turn that sphere into generating these 
super shapes. So right now I moved these points around with random one numbers. What kind of other math might I apply to start uh, moving the points around and seeing how that's done? So thanks for watching this sphere geometry video. Um, stay tuned also for, I'm gonna look at how to maybe do this with WebGL in JavaScript in a separate video. So I've also got that coming as well. Okay, see you soon. Hello, quick epilogue uh, addendum to that video. There was actually a big fatal flaw uh, not so fatal, actually. My code was fine. It made something interesting. But there was a flaw where I wasn't getting the effect that I expected. The, ef the effect that I ex expected, <laughs> let me run this now, is uh, this, which is actually getting nice, perfect uh, horizontal bands of color for the rainbow effect. And that the reason why is I had in these formulas by accident reversed my latitude and longitude. And we can see on the Wikipedia page that right here, this Theta actually refers to latitude, having a range between zero and pi, and phi, phi, fo, fum, uh, the Greek letter phi, has a range, it refers to longitude, or the range between zero and two pi. And I also, I don't know why I had between negative pi and pi, and negative pi divided by two, I now also adjusted those ranges, and you can see the ranges are now between zero and pi, zero and two pi, and I have latitude and longitude in the right place. And we can really see, and this, by the way, I have also changed the sphere detail to 200, the total value to 200. So you can see those bands are much more uh, kind of nuanced and detailed. If I change this back to something crazy like five, you would see that like now this sphere has very sort of like strong, hard geometry to it. And it would be interesting to kind of make that a dynamic value so you can kind of have this, you know, almost like cube uh, morph into a sphere. So I'll let you play around. The correct code will be posted. Hopefully you weren't like typing all these comments in the chat to fix it. And then you got to the end of the video and realized I fixed it at the end. But if you did, then that just means you're kind of participating in the community that is this world and that makes me happy. So thanks for watching this addendum and who knows, there might actually be another addendum starting a moment later, but I don't think so. I think this is the last one. Goodbye.